Oh, it's it's absolutely the game. Uh, you should you should face up to the fact that you're going to face an obstacle course, and and brace yourself with relish and be determined to enjoy it. No no great leaders are ever made in easy times, and you are being chosen to live in. I would say once every three, even five generational type times. This isn't a you know a thirty year cycle or a ten year cycle or a four year cycle that's finishing. This is a fiat based debt, physical money, and borrow into existence money system, and it's done on a scale that has been proliferated throughout the globe with interrelationships、uh, being built and cross holdings. That actually ensures that this will be the first ever macroeconomic global failure. Hey guys, welcome to Capital Cosm. Today I have a very special treat for you guys. It is none other than Mr. Francis Hunt of the Market Sniper, one and only Market Sniper. Francis, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for inviting me. Delighted to be among sound money friends. Yeah, likewise. As always, guys, nothing on this nothing on this video is to be taken as financial advice. I am not a financial advisor, and neither is Francis. So please do your own due diligence. With that said, Francis, for those who may not know who you are, give us a background on who who you are and what got you into investing. What's been your kind of journey into the investing space? Yeah, I think I'll give you the short one on that one because it's a lengthy one. But、uh, essentially, I'm a chartered market technician, qualified,、uh, and I've developed.、Uh, I'm the originator and founder of the Hunt Volatility Funnel Method. Basically, we look at macro charts,、uh, and we say there's so much deception、uh, in news nowadays. You have no idea what to believe. This has always been my position ever since I started. I've been a market technical analyst. I had my first charting system on a DOS system. Some people will be cackling there. They'll know what a DOS system is—a Microsoft DOS uh, system. Uh, way back in South Africa when I was first starting out, and I've gone—you know, UK,、uh, London, City of London, and a number of places around the world. And funny enough, I'm back in、uh, South Africa at the moment, enjoying a variety of different B&Bs and just、uh, enjoying life、um, while we're watching. Uh, Rome burn. Actually, it's been、um, quite a big、uh, week. So my main main qualifications, I suppose, what I'm known for is two major Euro Swiss franc collapses, calling the oil to single digits for the first time in 35 years、uh, in 2020,、uh, um, and the subsequent crash of pipeline companies, and also at the same time shorting Carnival, which was cruise liners, before finding out the reason why both cruise liners and、uh, oil was a short. Um, we've made lots of calls、uh, on gold、uh, to the upside during it breaking its thousand dollar mark when it was long time ago, but that's kind of old history. Most people won't know, so we get a lot wrong. I don't、uh, want to purport as all conquering, but essentially,、uh, I'm happy with getting something wrong when I've misread a chart. I don't like basing fundamental decisions on bad information where there's so much deception, even if the person passing to it, it to you is sincere. It's who's manipulated it and originated it in the original essence that matters. So for me, the ultimate truth, the God's handwriting on the wall, to use a little bit of a biblical phrase, because I do feel、um, talking biblical is not uh, uh, is not totally out of、uh, order for the, where we find ourselves.、Um, the truth is the footprints in the sand, and the footprints in the sand、uh, for all trackers, hence the sniper analogy,、uh, is without a doubt uh, the chart uh, because. The insiders always want to make money on the markets, and it's always the retail who are uninformed and don't know what's coming that always get stuffed. And the amazing thing is, patterns repeat. So you can see their footprints doing certain activities with the combination of oil, volatility measures, and pattern structures. And utilizing this, we get to、uh, uh, those are sort of the building blocks of、uh, HVF method, which is Hunt Volatility Funnel method, and that's how we choose to analyze charts. And we love capturing big macro、uh, calls. By the way, just for this week so far, if I can,、uh, just a den as a bit of humor.、Uh, um, Evergrande has been liquidated. Right now, we're recording at 31st of January. 
Elon's pay package was denied. Uh, farmers are laying siege uh, to Paris. That's also in Germany and a number of other nations, by the way. Did you see uh, the manure they're, they're spraying on the Capitol? On that's the right. Capitol buildings? Uh, that's right. They found Amelia Earhart's plane and the first Neuralink chip has been implanted. I'm not considering that a major point of progress for me, um, but nonetheless, many are. Uh, and it's only Wednesday of this week, uh, so we'll see. And of course, gold is surging and Bitcoin got a, a nice pump bid after retesting the 42,500, a key level of significance we've identified on our crypto channel for many people. So um, there's some interesting charts worth looking at uh, during the course of the chat as well, I would say, uh, if you're up for it. Yeah, 100%. Well, uh, you mentioned your investment philosophy there uh, in the beginning. I kind of want to dig into that for a second and figure out like how you guys identify opportunities, you know, what you guys, how you guys deal with percent allocation, portfolio allocation, uh, how do you deal with asymmetry and that kind of thing? Can you get, dig a little deeper in terms of, I know you use TA technical analysis, uh, but do you also use fundamental analysis to identify companies or are you more of a sector, uh, you know, person that looks at sectors as opposed to individual companies? What do you say? Uh, we've done little bits of all of those things. I mean, it was 2014 and I was in London and its biggest investment con conference in London is known as the Master Investor. And I was on a stage speaking there and I told everybody that they should uh, wail into almost universally all the British and as well as the American military industrial complex holdings and that we're going to see an ever greater escalation of their role in, in the current society um, and they were going to face the largest of government spend in what will be a death blow off. That was 2014. Since then, I think Lockheed Martin's done 10x. I actually mentioned a British company called BAE, and I was actually challenged from an audience member who actually worked there or consulted there and said that it's an absolute shambles of a company. And I said, you probably know a whole bunch more than me uh, in terms of, of how well run it is. Um, but when you're having a largesse of status, government money and contract thrown at you, even limping dogs uh, appear athletes uh, and go very well. And I can point out there that BAE share price is around five times uh, in this over the same period as well. Um, so it was an, that was a kind of um, macro technical uh, outlook, but it was also tempered with our fundamental uh, understanding of where the, the the globalists, the dark states are intending to take us. Um, and essentially, we're seeing the strangulation. There's two two economies. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the, the, the balloons for kids where they make a dog, the clown that does it for your, your, your son or daughter, etc. And they actually fill a tube of balloon up with air and then they twist it and they actually create two segments to a tube of balloon. In some ways, we're in that analogy fundamentally. And the one half, you've twisted it nicely, is being bled out. And the other one is being hyper pumped up. And this is the status, the status side that is getting um, hyper pumped up uh, in terms of everything that's going on. In short, um, there's no, there's no uh, surveillance finance uh, military or pharmaceutical industrial complex, which is weaponized against citizenry that isn't getting immense largesse at the moment. And in the meantime, you're getting a crowding out effect where retail, that is the other half of the balloon, is actually being drained. You're having to be taxed and none of your tax is going into infrastructure to fund uh, new roads and better hospitals for you. But instead, it's all going into uh, surveillance projects, data housing projects where they capture your biometrics, uh, which is, of course, Amazon and Microsoft, all of these big, essentially fascist, large corporations that are dealing and doing and serving government's behest are essentially capitalism. maxing out. Uh, as a point to hyper uh, make that point, the S&P should be 4% down year on year if you remove the Magnificent Seven out of it, while in actual fact, it's quite strongly up for the year ending 2023. Um, so that just gives you an idea that there's some that are feasting and others that are in famine. And it is this polarization. We stood on um, Greenwich Hill 
in 2017 and said there's a major polarization event. You are seeing this polarization in the corporate world. Don't forget during the events of um, March 2020, uh, all the SMEs were closed, but news uh, channels ran uh, essentially adverts about how, how innovative Amazon was and they were doing all of this amazing packaging and you could order online delivery with no effect to your health, whilst SME owners were being shut and your statist broadcasters were in fact running promo ads for you to stay indoors and order things online through Amazon and many other corporations, uh, by the way, that have very interesting and tenuous and complex tax arrangements, such as Apple that paid, I think someone calculated 0.8% in total of all its UK revenue in UK, et cetera, et cetera. So you get a little bit of a cut of my jib here. There's two, there's two halves to this economy and they, they're no longer halves anyway. And that's why we're getting this Gini curve flatten. And that's why we billionaires are getting richer. And inflation, by the way, is central bank policy. And the billionaires get richer on that because they borrow very cheap from their bankster pals and they buy assets with leverage and they leverage that and buy more assets and they have access to capital markets at a price you and I would never get. Some people are on credit card rates paying 12 through, through to 29%. Others are in personal loan rates. Uh, but the, the billionaire class, um, they get special uh, lending rates and they buy assets. And they, uh, and and they reap assets, the benefits and they reap the benefits of the Cantillon effects. A hundred percent. As the inflation comes, their assets hyperinflate uh, and their debt diminishes and you build immense wealth. Uh, and it's an amazing thing if you get the privilege, the exorbitant privilege of borrowing for ch cheap, which uh, the banking system does and its key core mega corporate clients do, uh, especially ones like some of those companies I mentioned. So that fundamental backdrop and identifying that trend just by a virtue of understanding that this is a stripping out process. A, a, essentially a modern communism, a technologic com technological surveillance finance communism that is being uh, superimposed over us, that there will be a chosen golden circle of supposed amazing businesses that are in fact corporate statist, statist and fascist. And these are the ones like Gillette that did the woke adverts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, across the board. Starbucks with they'll only hire transgender, you know, all these various narratives. And you just have to go back to who's funding these stories. And you see BlackRock, uh, you see the city of London and the families behind that city of London. Uh, a certain type of person and you can do your own study on who who exactly when I talk about type of person that is but we're fighting a fight against this and you have to build wealth retain wealth and protect wealth in an environment where you're going to have counterparty risk like you've never seen before these people were specialists this mercantilist class that ran the, the Marco Polo legs the, out through Albania, Caucasus, Kazaria, as it was known, um, all the way. they specialists at doing lending rug pulls, uh, establishing banks, uh, getting trusts, say, leave your gold with us, we'll look after it, da 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 da, -da borrow against it, have a paper, have a derivative option, which puts you in, gets in between you and your physical asset of value, and then disappearing or bank goes bust. A lot of this happened pre-World War II. A lot of Europeans lost all their money because of these small niche banks run by the same mercantilist classes. So the game, when you talk about portfolio theory, I am actually very skewed because your original question is, you know, how do you decide? I am doing reset in economics. And reset economics says, Anything that's paper or digitized is not worth the paper. It's written on all the binary digit it is in the computer. Um, you've got to watch The Great Taking and many others. Essentially, if you don't hold it and it isn't physical and retain value, it's quite likely you'll lose it. Uh, and that is quite an extreme doctrine because for most times people talk to you about the 60-40 portfolio. We've been talking about the collapse of debt. You've just had a bank, a New York bank go bankrupt. You've got a property company go bankrupt. The common denominator in all of that is debt, debt and borrowing. The biggest bubble, the only bubble worth discussing is the proliferation of fiat via money that is borrowed into existence. And there is an absolute glut and it's been harmonized and synchronized globally so that you won't have a 32 
the 30s type depression that the states had, you're going to have a globalized version of that because of all the counterparties interlaying um, relationships. So it's ring a ring a rosies, a pocket full of posies, a tissue a tissue. We all fall down. We all fall down due to the fact that my hand is on your shoulder, your hand is on Joe's shoulder, my hand's on the person next to me's shoulder, and you only need one of the, the, the fat boys on the mountain climbing rope uh, where there's 10 of you all roped together up top to not have pegged in and to be chucking and falling off the cliff face, and a lot of us go down. And that is why. So it's quite an Armageddonist view, but that is the best way for how they clear everybody out of their assets and they end up owning everything, which is also part of their goal, which they've even informed you through the World Economic Forum. And I suggest you should take that uh, that threat because it's a threat far more seriously. You will own nothing and be happy means we will take all your stuff and put you on the happy pills. That's where you're at. You'll comply and you'll be a good slave. So there's actually, I like the fact that you brought up the uh, in, in, inequality between uh, the, the ruling class, let's say, and then the rest of us, the peons. There's actually a really good book about this called The Great Leveler, and it looks across various civilizations over time, and it finds that prosperous civilizations always fall under uh, you know, wealth, wealth inequality to, that, to, the, to the same degree that you mentioned, and they always collapse thereafter. That's usually the first that's uh, that's like an, a warning indicator that you're at the end stage of your uh, society there. It's called The Great Level. I'll, I'll post a link down below. I think it's a really interesting book. For Very interesting. But what you'll find is there's a common parasite in each of the, mm -hmm. those societies that uh, encourages, gets the lending going and starts instituting bad practice from chipping, you know, skimming gold coins uh, to everything, all the chicanery, creating proxies and derivative instruments and no longer holding your gold, giving it someone else who gives you a piece of paper. These are all points of bad practice because the minute you do that, you create uh, a major counterparty risk and a position of power for the person who is the central treasurer, which they will inevitably exploit. And there's a certain kind of person that always seeks that role and always perpetuates the same uh, cycle. So uh, it will be an interesting book, but there's an absolute, it's, it's, it's almost a natural order of events because of who is creating that environment and making those suggestions. They are manufacturing an environment for their solution, which they pre-prepared, which institutes and entrenches their power, wealth, and dominance over you and the opportunity to do the final rug pull, which sees their generations and lineage walk away with everybody else's assets to the detriment of lineages of history, historical wealth buildup in non insiders. And you can't buy the, the tricks. And we're, we're at the end game. By the way, we had a yield curve that had inverted on one of the measures revert back above zero recently two days ago so it's playing on the zero line it's back a bit below again but this is the the we've now moved from orange or amber to red alert for when every major recession stroke depression because i don't think we do major recessions anymore many of what we've experienced recently is closer to depressions and they've not let them run their full course um many of them uh, all of them in fact have had a yield curve inversion followed by a, a, a reverting back positive and that's the point in time when the, you are ready to have the collapses and we're having a lot of those shoes drop right now uh, so you've got a bank failure today uh, a new york bank you've got a major property mega corp liquidation in china which also did a lending experiment to synchronize itself with the rest of the world and you have um a yield curve uh, reverting positive uh, after about a year and six months and 10 days, the 30 and two. So you're talking about one of the longest inversions of the modern era since the Falker. This is the biggest, deepest, longest yield curve inversion. That points to an even greater net fallout that is going to be on hand. This truly is what's moved today up? Gold and Bitcoin and silver too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
I, I, I really enjoyed the fact that you brought up that there, there's been, you know, a common, uh, elite, you know, throughout time that have kind of used these practices that go against the concepts of sound money to control society or, or to, you know, bankrupt society to steal from society. But what makes it even more dangerous today is that they have the backdrop of all of this technology that is asymmetric to their advantage, right? So now you, you sure can have like a group of a few thousand people that go to the World Economic Forum, but now all of a sudden they have tools that surveil billions of people worldwide. And over time, you know, all you know, the the control mechanism only grows wider and wider. So, you know, you mentioned commodities as or I don't think you mentioned, but I'm, I think you're alluding to commodities there as the uh, the trade uh, to to kind of play here, because, you know, as bad as it sounds and as unsavory as it may sound, is that, you know, if all things being equal and, you know, if we're going to be poor or we're going to profit from it in some capacity, we may as well profit from it. So then that way we can reap the benefits of it and then help the people around us in the process. Uh, you know, it's kind of a defeatist attitude amongst a lot of people, uh, for lack of a better term, in the conspiracy movement that are very defeatist, very black pilled. Uh, they don't want to do anything actionable. Uh, but I think it, it's incumbent that if you do understand what's going on, that you take the necessary steps to at least make some money off it. So then that way, at least you can help your family, you can help your community in the process. Complete. I mean, there's no macroeconomic nation that is not going to be infect, uh, infected by the malaise and the contagion of this. Even if you were playing a perfect game and you were uh, Austrian economics 101 nation, which there is virtually no one I can name that is that, uh, just by virtue of being plugged into the international circuitry with all the other lepers around you, um, you will be uh, made into a leper by virtue of massive losses and contagion. Unless you walled the wagons and only bought equity in your own nation state and just did trade deals for payment and switched everything out of the currencies you received back into that. And of course, that mercantilist cartel that I've described would never allow that. They would uh, stage a bit of democracy export uh, and then put a puppet leader in. And in fact, there's a history of that. The Spartans had exactly that. And after they were made to fight, they started to take advisors from this mercantilist cl classes. They were sent to ever greater wars. More of the men died. More of the women had the money, uh, the bulk of the wealth uh, through legacies. And then they were sold baubles and trinkets and jewelry. And they stopped dressing in a very uniform, Spartan, simple way. And their leaders being very uniform and simple, they started chasing status and conspicuous consumption. And it was all downhill from there. So the actual feminization due to excessive wars um, was devastating for the principle that they built themselves on. Uh, so it's, it's impossible to be that one sound nation state because you would absolutely attract um the attentions the closest thing we have probably is switzerland in uh europe where most of the dark states uh hqs are uh in terms of their location bank of international uh, so settlements the CIA and many others and, and and incidentally switzerland and the vatican have square flags uh as does the city of london there's a lot of mm. you know you can go do a a, a a deep dive on that one if you're up for it and, and, um, and for but, those of you guys that don't know the city of london is not the actual city of London there it's a it's an enclave within London and they have Correct. their own rules and jurisdictions and so forth like the district of Columbia in the states and the Vatican in uh, Rome yep so there's a lot of geopolitical tensions going around in the world today you've got the stuff in Ukraine uh, between Ukraine and Russia and NATO you've also got the tensions rising in the Middle East how important is it to keep abreast of the geopolitics around the world, given how politicized these markets have become? Or do you even uh, like, or to what degree to... have these markets become politicized? Oh, they're 100% uh, politicized, synchronized, coordinated, mass mainstream media managed in terms of message. Um, so I tend to find, I see things in the charts first. I saw the yield curve uh, reversion two days ago. Now we're getting the Evergrande news. 
Now we're getting um, a bank failure again, you know, starting another year with a bank failure. The New York, uh, I must check which one it is. I don't think it's a massive one. Um, and you're sitting with uh, people thinking should be in gold. Uh, what do you think that does for the debt markets? Actually, I, I should get a chart up for the debt markets because while you've been speaking, I was just checking on gold and the US oil uh, markets, but uh, the debt markets might be interesting too. Uh, let's check, uh, have a look at the US 30 year yield. That's the big long-term fella. Let's see if that yield has gone up any. If in actual fact, it looks like it's gone down. Um, the Fed did some unbelievable announcements recently. They, in fact, so yes, it would go down um, because of potential failure. So if you have a bank failure or a major property group failure, don't forget, I think BlackRock got involved and bought some of that debt. Uh, someone was mentioning to me, I didn't read it firsthand, someone was mentioning it. So I, I say that under correction, potential correction, but I think they did get involved. This is all loss making stuff. Do you, uh, you want to share a screen? Francis? Yeah. So yes, indeed. If we can, I'll do that. Um, and I'll ask you for that. So it's quite topical that we're chatting today because it's, as I said, it's, it's only Wednesday and uh, a bunch of stuff has gone down already. Yeah. And we're not even done with the first month of the year yet. At the time of Correct. The so I, I've given you. Hey guys, Capital Cosm here. Before we start this video, I just want to let you know that I believe that we are on the cusp of a major uranium bull market. Now, these things don't happen every other week. The last uranium bull market peaked in 2007, the one before that, in 1978. So when these things happen, you've got to take advantage of it. And how explosive are they? Well, you've all heard the stories of uranium skyrocketing from $10 to $20, all the way up to $150 in these uranium bull markets. Where will it go this time around? Well, we don't know. We'll see. But you've got to take advantage of the opportunity. What better way to do that than to leverage Justin Hune's Uranium Insider newsletter? You get access to his monthly newsletters, his webinars, his stock picks, his portfolio, all of that stuff. You get access to guests that you may not see on YouTube. You, may, you get access to having them ask questions that you may not see anywhere else. So I highly recommend if you're going to take part in this uranium bull market, you check out Uranium Insider. The link is in the down in the description. Link is down in the description box below. Be sure to click the link. There's quarterly plans, there's annual plans. So if you're kind of tepid, you're kind of hesitant, you could always go with the quarterly plan. Kind of test things out, sample things out, see if you like it or not. But the way I see it, guys, you know, you've got to pick the right stocks. A lot of these uranium companies are not going to make it to the other side. And Justin Hune's stock picks, his portfolio has outperformed URA, URNM. Now, and, and Justin Hune's uranium portfolio has outperformed the likes of URA by a significant margin. Since 2019, it's up 5x from where, from where it started. So click the link down below and we'll get started right now on the video. Thanks, guys. Cool. There you go. Yeah. So this is the 30 year debt market. We had a, a technical structure, which we warned everybody, you're going to trade through five. We had the target of 4.78. We said we can see a topping out because targets, you don't typically stop exactly at the target. And we did just get through five. There was a spike there and then a little bit more hang time there, but it couldn't hold for long. Now, what you're seeing is this, the debt rates have been turning down. Now, the interesting thing is that actually means people are treating bonds still as a defensive instrument, which is still remains shocking to me, given the level of debt. Don't forget the Fed came out and said, remember, we told you we're going to need massive number. I think it was 800 plus, plus, plus billion for quarter one. Well, we only need 760 billion. So that pushed bond prices up a little bit because it means they would be issuing much less than they had originally guided new money. But 760 billion for a single quarter, it's a third of a trillion. So over a year, it's quite easy mathematics. You're burning at three trillion a year. And as I always remind people, people forget what numbers are. They truly do. Me and you standing and counting to a million, one number every second, no sleep, no food. We're on a 24 hour shift, 12 hours you, 12 hours me. 12 and a half days to count to a million, mm -hmm. 32 years to count to 1 billion of you doing nothing else but sleep and count while I'm sleeping. And then a trillion, 32,000 years. 
Imagine the entire lineage yeah. of your family being cursed to walk, work a day night shift of counting numbers. That's how long it would take. That's assuming you can obviously say the length of the number each time, which you wouldn't be able to anyway. You'd just probably say the last three digits and someone else would be keeping track of the number. But just conceptualize that. Now you're having three of those, 32,000 years of seconds, three of them to just get through one year on your overspend, on your overspend to your income. I mean, just understand that and know there is absolutely no way any of this debt gets paid off. And the other thing that we were known for was the call. In the year that it happened, we said, this is a turn for the bond market. Don't forget, until recently, many, many people were buying the possibility of negative interest rates. In it's only in the last three years that that's properly had a nail or a, a stake driven through its Dracula heart. The bond market has been a net. This is the yield. So yep. the prices and values of bonds goes up when the yields go down. Mm -hmm. This has been a nothing but a bull market for bonds all the way down. And as rates had a final capitulation here in March 2020 with the event that we will not name. And we called this turn. We said you get above there. We called this turn very early when it was around here. Everyone was saying, buy the damn dip on bonds. Buy you the actually, dip you on actually bonds. saw the, the yield curve invert, I think, a few months before uh, that event there in 2020. Correct. Correct. It was it was preceded by a yield curve inversion. Mm -hmm. We can show you the yield curve inversion if you would like to see it. But I'm just showing you the yield. And of course, the yep. values were doing this. They do the opposite. They go, you know, the price as bonds. Right. And then it had a blow off top just as the rates had a capitulation. And that is how the dot-com boom ends. This is why we macro-technical. We said that's the end. You've ended a 40-year. It was the first call that we've ever made on ending the, the bond bull market. We've never called it an end. And there's been 40 years of people who have. And it was March 2020. That's why people don't realize what an absolutely macro economic event this biological event was. And the other point that people don't realize is you were preceded again by an inversion, as you mentioned, in 2019, in September, October, you had repo market problems. Major repo. Repo is banks lending to each other, in interbank lending. And they all started to have doubts about each other and they were having a Mexican standoff and the Fed had to intervene. A little known fact is at least 24 trillion was sent to European and US banks. So the Fed, an American institution supposedly, working for the citizens of America, supposedly only not, sent even to broken Swiss banks, 3.9 trillion to one Swiss bank. Trillion, remember what I said about the scale of that number. Yep. And they put that on their debt account and they tell Americans, that, you know, we've got a big interest, old interest bill, help us pay, do your bit, pay your taxes in to sustain the intermediaries of their debt. They have to keep the bankers going because they are the retail stores that push out the debt they are creating to run their Ponzi scheme. And that's why you're getting such obscure politics like the obvious fraud that is going on in uh, Ukraine, the theft, the skullduggery. It is end of days. It's literally the store is closing and the staff haven't been paid and they're looting the, the store so, for its so, most valuable goods. The TVs are going and everything, but everyone's pretending that we're still functioning and there's still customers coming in. Oh, that's out of stock, sir. That's out of stock. Don't mind me while I check in. Whoops, just got to clear a few shelves here into the my back of my van out the back there. That's what's going on. It's end of days. It's bizarre. It's peculiarity. This is the this is the people that know that the game is over, whilst the, the punter who's coming in through the front door doesn't. And they are literally stripping the assets off the walls, you know, the lights and fixtures while pretending the facade of the house is, is, is as it's always been as you walk by on the street. Uh, it's a hollowing out. And they know it's over. And they know there will probably be no record of how it came to be over once everything gets written off and there's a big bonfire and 
gee, we lost the power and the backup server and it was the Russians that hacked us and all proof of who got what. And what are they doing? They're taking those fiat and they're buying farmland. BlackRock's buying housing mm -hmm. at almost any price. Everything. They're turning it into physical assets while telling you tokenization is awesome. They're starting the ETF. His eyes really light up, not for Bitcoin, but for tokenization. It will be transnational. What he means is he's selling it to you. You're going to escape your government. Meanwhile, he's actually saying the holder of the chain will now be the uni, uni boss and the full surveillance system. So you are actually breaking out of a nationalist system to a new world order system. And that's why he's saying, you'll escape your government. You'll escape your government to fall under the big guy that runs the whole blockchain. And we saw how they behaved with the SWIFT system to the Russians. So not only did they freeze the money, they now are going to actually steal the money entirely and then use that money against Russia by funding uh, the Ukrainian offense with their assets. How can an a financial system, which is not agnostic, which doesn't make moral judgments about the deposit of the money that says, oh, we think you're a bad guy. We don't think you got your deposit anymore. In fact, we're going to give it to your neighbor who has a fight with you and you, it'll fund his legal fees about a boundary issue that you have. I mean, that's absolutely absurd. And that's where we are. And what do you think that does for the debt market? Do you think the rest of the world is going to buy your debt? Do your friends that fear maybe one day having an argument with you or falling out, do you think they're going to buy your debt? debt market. So the debt market went no bid when Cal the, the Californian uh, pension, the second biggest pension, state pension in all of America, that they borrowing money against the assets rather than attempting to sell it, which they say in illiquid conditions at low values. So the collateral that they're going to give is deflating collateral, and it's only going to deflate further, and they can't sell because there's not sufficient bid, and the, and the Fed doesn't want them to crash the market and to prove that there's no bid. It literally is what we call you know, a micro-cap token issued by a scamster that pumps it to the moon on really thin money and says it's worth ten dollars and he's got you know five trillion of them you know some ridiculous market cap and then anybody who tries to sell more than one or two um you know there's no bid they can't do it uh it's a complete held up on air it's an air pocket when you're in the 747 you just you just drop and you drop so far because there's nothing under you there is no bid for the amount of people that need to exit there is insufficient bid and the fed is the liquidity provider the buyer of last resort and they don't want to buy it. So they will, if you keep smacking the offer, uh, if, uh, the bids, apologies, with your offers to get out of the debt market, you'll get a call and say, what are you doing? What are you doing? You, why are you unloading? What are you doing with the money? You'll get a tax inquiry. You'll get, hey, don't do that. Uh, here's what you can do. Go get a loan against your stuff. Go do something else. That's what the pension was told. Go get a loan. So this is where we're at. It's, it's, it's not only not worth what they say it is, you can't actually talk about a functioning liquid market for someone who wanted to get wholly out. Yet people own bonds. People own bonds. I'm talking to people here in South Africa, wealthy people with financial advisors. They own bonds. They own bo you, should not, you should remove all debt instruments out of your portfolio, in my opinion, non-advisory. I've done that. Let me not say you should like that. Let me just say I have done and you should consider your position. The traditional financial advisory services are for traditional times. This is end of system times. This is system of a down. Guys need to wake up and take it seriously. The great taking. Do you have your share certificates if you want to hold them? Expect them to drop very hard. The best thing you could do, get super liquid, get all your money out the banks and buy gold and silver. That's almost certainly one of the best things you could do. Sure, there might be space for Bitcoin uh, and a couple of big cap cryptos in there as well, but they will drop harder and further. We're going to have a major disinflationary event. The yield curve doesn't lie. The, we will have, and we don't do small anymore. And this time it's global and you know what they want to do. And they're even talking about how they're going to distract you. How many people knew that 24 trillion was sent to banks? The, the, the March 2020 events were sold to you as a biological event. It was a bigger financial bailout event than 2008. But nobody's talking about the bankers this time. <laughs> how did they manage that? How did they manage that? That is media direction.
Nobody points to it. There was one Zero Hedge article and it's been scrubbed. I can't even find it anymore. Yeah. There, where I mean, the at guy the very, gave at the very minimum, at the very minimum, there was at the very minimum, there was insider information as to what was going to happen uh, yeah. first month of 2020. Again, with that with that yield curve inversion, which is largely driven by insiders for the most part. I mean, you know, insiders get wind of you know events from things that are coming down the line from scientists and uh other uh insiders at higher levels and it spreads amongst this insider community and so they're able to kind of front run these events there um and whether it's concocted legit you know we're on youtube but uh you know it's uh how, have you ha you brought up tokenization uh, are Absolute you aware of nightmare for all of us, by the way? What, so do, do you know what I was saying earlier about establishing a proxy between you and your physically owned assets? Right. Eventually so you own a bicycle or a motorbike. that's going to have a token with it. Exactly. And I can buy that token online. And now you have a rental agreement for using that bike with me as your landlord over your bicycle. They've even brought up the, the notion of tokenizing nature. So like even like a, a random rock just sitting there would be tokenized. So they well, really want the to... The interesting thing about that is the assumption is that someone can own it in the first place to tokenize it and they'll assume that privilege. That's why Nestle and companies like that say you don't own the water that falls on your roof from rain. Um, they are assuming ownership. When they say you don't own it, what they're actually saying is we're thinking of how we proxy own it to make you pay for it. Because our whole model is the membership model. You will notice that Microsoft and everybody else, you rent everything. You don't own Office anymore. You rent it. Everything is gone rental model. And the stock market treats you with a higher uh, value because you have recurring income, which reduces risk. I mean, we all want a business that's as recurring. We have, you know, in our business, we have membership monthlies. Uh, so I started months with money as opposed to having to do all new business to get a number at the end of each month. And obviously, investors prefer that. Uh, and it gives you a higher multiple. And in actual fact, we're going that model. And I refer you back to the you will own nothing and be happy. It's a rentier society they're going to set up with corporate fascist groups that will be the primary owners over this as per the purchases of farmland. Uh, residential houses and everything else. They're getting out of the fiat that will devalue. They're getting out of the debt and they're building up a massive portfolio and physical things. And tokenization is how they will separate you from your physical assets. And when you have a home, the last thing you should allow, I mean, it, it was kind of like this in the UK. They started water metering. You used to just get water and pay a fixed number. Uh, the last thing you want is the metering because they, that was how they pushed in price controls, uh, higher costs. Nobody got metering put in and it went and it went cheaper for them on the waterfront. Everybody went higher. Uh, and in the same way, um, tokenization, you should not comply and reject. But your whole social score is going to be based on it. All your other conveniences, all your social, you know, X is going to be, a social scoring mechanism. They're going to look at the tweets I've done and decide that I'm a divergent uh, anti, you know, anti BLM, anti communist, whatever. And my score will reflect that. Um, and you've got to be very, very cautious about these things. These things that look docile are going to turn into uh, payment mechanisms, payment gateways, uh, and play a role with this tokenization. It's not surprising that Elon has played games with certain tokens, you know, pumping Bitcoin, then pumping Doggy, and then, you know, playing various other uh, uh, stupid little funny games. This is coming. This is coming. The, the association has already been made with a social media site and uh, cryptocurrencies. Uh, so it's a real worry. Yeah. So you've got gold there. Uh, so Correct. what's the significance of gold to the economic order? Uh it's one thing that they don't control if you physically own. Literally, you have nine-tenths possession. It's, it's a passive a classic saying, and I'm sure you know it. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Mm -hmm. You possess nothing in a digital world. You possess promises, counterparty risk. The great taking is your equities are pooled. You don't even have the share certificates. You don't own them. You don't have the paperwork that says Francis Hunt owns one million of Endeavor Silver Mining. Um, you don't have that. Uh, all you have is a, a 
an, an online intermediary that tells you you have a position in that that lends out the script uh, and you have a proxy PL that goes up or down. It's all derivatives. Everything is a derived market. Um, almost absolutely every, everything, unless you have a physical document signed uh, in your possession, it is a derived market. Uh, and it's the same with gold. There's no derivative, uh, there's no deriving a gold bar that you hold in your hand. Um, you own it. If I sit here and hold one in my hand, it's mine. It's not yours. And if you're holding one, it's yours. It's not mine. Uh, and I need to come with a gun to get it off you and hope my gun's bigger than yours and I shoot straighter than yours. So the, the likelihood is it's still yours because it's a long, long way to go to you. And if you, you know, take basic safety precautions, it's going to take quite a bit of doing to get it off you. And that's that's the best thing right now. De-digitize your life. Uh, de network, social, etc. Look, I have to be in the matrix to exploit it as well to a degree. And that's why I'm here and I'm on Twitter as well. But there will be a point where I'll, I'll choose to go dark uh, and it'll be better. And we talk about getting loans, have a shooting range in common, um, have a, you know, initially maybe a WhatsApp group, but you might want to transition that to a more secretive thing, have radio, citizen band radio what we used to know as cb radio and ham radio where you have contact that they can't listen in they have to keep they, they can but they would have to go through such rigmaroles to get that in it's like hard to get wiretaps mobile phone and the platforms of communication that are provided on your mobile phone are dragnet capture surveillance on everything you do as well as your locality your position your biometrics and everything else they are already building immense databases with all of us just appearing here they know the shape of my face and yours so i mean you know we have to accept that this game is deep into the fourth quarter uh to use an nfl parlance and we've got this great structure I've underlined in pink, and you've got gold getting a bit of a bid, getting back above the 2045. We've highlighted two key levels, the 2000 and this 2045, which seems to be central to this. And you've got this massive winding up structure here. Massive, massive. That is squeezing on volatility. Mm -hmm. And we expect at some point the final third leg like this. And we expect a, a substantial move that will say goodbye to the 2000 level. You know, we traded below 2000 for a bit here after making the break above 2000. And this was an all time high. So we're expecting a very aggressive, uh, not too far out uh, move to the upside in gold. And that gold silver ratio will either stretch even further or silver will have to start moving too. Gotcha. So <clears throat> with with gold and silver, uh, gold typically moves first, followed by silver. Silver is kind of the laggard there. Uh, what's kind of the outlook there of the gold and silver ratio at the moment? I think it's it's climbing at the moment. So who gets afraid with Evergrande uh, and banks, big institutions and central banks? They buy gold because silver takes too much storage space and is too cheap. You need to buy massive weights of it. So what's happened is silver actually got slammed back down as the miner here back it pumped up to on this news to 23.32 cents and it just largely got sent all the way back down. So what that does for the gold silver ratio which is here is that's actually going up again. Mm -hmm. So as long as it's mainly institutions and um governments it's going to be gold that moves first. It's your God market, as we call it. Right. So be in gold. Yeah. But once gold but, starts uh, to move significantly. Too many people get too soon all in in silver and then they cry. I've been in the silver position for four years. You told me silver would move. It's not moving. You get, you get the crying and the whining. Be in gold. You should be in gold. Overweight in gold. You will pivot. When a key event technically on this, when we break down through here, you can start getting to 50% by value silver. When we get back down there and we break, assuming, and you know, that's an assumption, mm -hmm. by the way, it's not a prediction uh, that you have to go through this level. It could, it could take six months to do that. Could go higher first, you know, could do a lot of things, but on the break of this channel level that we've been stuck in uh, for an extended period, uh, I will then make sure I have 50% by value in silver. And once it comes down to 65, 
I will go two thirds silver. But gold is doing just grand for me. But you know, everybody's in silver. They go a hundred. They binary. They either one or the other, and they go a hundred percent in. And silver's going nowhere. And they've been sitting there for years now since the silver. What was it? Pumper Please. Mentals, the, the the silver bullion guys. What are they called? Yeah, uh, Wall Street Silver, Silver Squeeze. Wall Street. Thank you. Yeah. So it's a frustrating hold at the moment, silver. Look, I've got a silver equity uh, that I'm particularly weighty in. Uh, it's going nowhere, but I'm patient. It it will when it will, uh, and it will go when the other markets are down. By the way, why, why have why have the oh, equities? Why have the equities lagged behind the precious metals? So a couple of reasons. The, the firing order goes like this. Gold. Stay gold. It's much like Bitcoin as well. I mean, Bitcoin's much like gold because gold is the original. But gold moves first and it's the greatest store. You get much more density of value in a much smaller place. Da, 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 da. And it's the big money that is smartest that moves first. Da, 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 da. Then the, the everyday man's money of silver moves. During that period, you'll have gold-based equities also moving, possibly a bit before silver, possibly a bit during silver or a bit after. Um, so equities are a derivative of gold and they have a multiplier leverage, but they've had an extended amount of inflation inflicted on them. They've had wages go up. They've had energy costs go up. It's an immense amount of energy to make massive holes in the ground, dig all that ground and bring it to the surface against gravity and then sort it out and then move that waste ground all over the place and create mine slums. Um, and so what's happened is the inflation has actually moved faster up than the gold price. You're almost really at break even gold price. In the, the South African platinum mines, they're actually not making money in the current price. They shouldn't really be doing platinum at all. They should close. The only reason they've been able to keep doing it, they need $1,000 and they need the RAND at 20. The RAND's below 20. Uh, so I'm talking about South African platinum miners. They need 20,000 RAND an ounce. They're not getting that. Platinum is below $1,000. I'll have to check if it is today. Um, and the RAND is below 20. The only reason they've been able to is because they've also been pulling out rhodium and palladium in the part of the same job. And those were moon shooters that have since crashed. So they were cross subsidizing their platinum mining. So when you dig the same hole anyway, and you're getting other stuff, that's your bonus money that actually makes you your profit. The platinum just covers the cost. So you're going to find, um, and costs of energy are going to go up for miners as well. You're going to find they're going to have to become independent on energy because the ESCOM, uh, the local power provider can't provide. So there's lots of, you know, there's a natural bottom that is an inflationary minimum going up. And $2,000 is probably not far off it on gold. Um, so they haven't made, the miners haven't made the money because their costs have been escalating. The other thing is forward sales. Too many of them have done, they've been bad guesses in terms of the market direction. And they've locked in prices at lower values. Uh, and you can't help for that. That's what the derivative markets are for, to take uh, the casino aspect away and to give certainty. So they'll lock in a break-even result or a slight, slight profit, and then they've thrown away a far bigger profit because gold has moved up. But they've been hearing gold's going to go up one of these days for, you know, also for 10 years. Uh, and so they just go, we hedge, you know, uh, just so that we know we can make payroll and we can do all these things. So that's why the equities lag to answer one part of your question. Then the, to finish the firing order, it's silver. And then, you know, finally, the silver energies where silver is the, uh, the equities where silver is the dominant revenue provider to the very few pure silver plays. So in equities. So that's the firing order. So it's best to be in the main commodity gold right now in our opinion. Um, and th that's where we because largely... that'll move first. And it is moving first. And it's moving very, very well. So I'll go back to that. Many people will go, oh, but, 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 you know, I'm not making money. Everybody there's a bit spoiled maybe in the crypto realm. Uh, it's not Bitcoin we want, it's gold. So if you just have a look at that and go, say, a three-day you know, you had an all-time high not so long ago, 4th of December. And what you're currently doing over here is that, above 2,000. 
And we've done other technical draws like this that point to this entire setup being one big continuation pattern from the March 2020 dip lows. By the way, if you're to have a disinflationary event, gold will sell off like everything else. Nothing. If people can't eat, they'll sell whatever they can mm -hmm. if there's a market open for it. But when the events of March 2020 occurred, it flash crashed, not nearly as much as Bitcoin or anything else, right. and then quickly pumped higher and went higher. It was over in a very short period and made a new high. So providing you're not a forced seller at the bottom, you're going to be just dandy. And uh, that was a localized bottom that was over very, very quickly. So let's give you a bit more of that chart. Yeah, you if can... you look at like gold versus the S&P, uh, gold uh, outperformed the S&P there in that time yes. of 2020. Everything dumped. And this just flash crashed and bounced straight away. And it was coming up from all the way down here. Yeah, I mean, it and essentially just looks like it just, quite some move. It looks like it just crashed down back to what November levels, like which was three months prior. Met the previous low, point. yeah. Met the previous low, and then rejected it, mm -hmm. and then blew up. But the extent of this uh, this continuation has frustrated a lot of people because that was, you know, the end of 2020, and yeah. we're now in 2024. And you've got so what a, quad a quadruple top there. Yeah. One, two, and three, that four. just means the big move is even bigger because this has been resistance. We talk about three times resistance, fourth time you break. And there's your three resistances and you're broken now, but you had a smash back in and now you're winding up. So that's part of how you overcome a big level. You do what's called a break mm. and feign back down. So you first have a unsuccessful, what appears to be an unsuccessful, but what happens is it thins the offer, much less people become sellers. And then the new reasons are building as to why you should be a buyer. And then those sellers aren't there in the same strength next time you go and up you go. So we've called for 2,900, uh, just shy of 3K. We think the 3K, we might get a technical run of the 3K, by the way. Uh, but you got you didn't get 2K one after the 1,000K was run. You ran up to 1927. And then you had a pullback. And then you had a lengthy, lengthy pullback all the way through. Uh, and we just don't have the space and the, the breadth for that. I think there'll be a... I don't actually think once the calamities continue, I don't actually think you will even have a, a market or a broker that will trade right the way through this. I think counterparty risk could be that big. I think they will announce that gold is $10,000. And it'll be China who announces it. You'll have a whole bunch of it. And at the, at the same time that they announce that they have 100,000 tons or 50,000 tons or whatever the case may be. And there and will instantly be a new economic force. And so will Russia, who's been accumulating. And America will be found out to have far less than it thinks, is my opinion. In other words, I believe Kissinger when he said the gold is going from west to east. Mm -hmm. uh, and I believe that also means the wealth is going from west to east. And there's going to be a major downdraft of wealth on all people in the west relative to the people in the east. Uh, that's not that the east will go up during this period, but they'll go less down. And in the long term, they will go more up. We've had peak west. Um, it's done. You know, the, the festering parasites have got into the brain there so deeply and the stuff they're pulling is absolutely counterproductive it's designed to crash the system and they know it many people go oh they're incompetent no it's by design it's by design to break it i mean of it, makes sense. Be it, it makes sense because they it, they know that the system is collapsing but with like let's say bill with just traditional buildings for example if you know a building's not good anymore you do a controlled demolition that way, at, least, at the very least, you control the collapse down. You have some sort of hand in it, and then you can you can af affect what comes after it. That's literally our phrase that I use all the time. We are witnessing a controlled demolition. The charges have been put in, you know. And people will go, "Well, Biden's so stupid." Yes, they. I know he's stupid. You know he's stupid, but he's put there to act stupid because he is stupid. Because they know he'll do, he'll pass stupid laws that they give him. He's not doing anything meaningful. They're putting the playbook in front of him and 
They are executing on it and everything they're doing. So let's just be clear uh, about this debt and inflation situation, um, Danny, because this is really interesting. Right now you have America with, a, you know, the leadership of the army who's a man wearing a dress and lipstick, uh, wondering why um, white guys aren't enlisting anymore and why it's flat for brown and blacks, uh, Latinos and African-Americans uh, joining the military. At the same time, bemoaning a lack of troop power. At the same time, Sweden, United Kingdom, Germany, and there was, I think, the Netherlands, and then Australia, believe it or not, talking about the threat of Russia. Now, I would love to tell you how far apart those two continents are, but they are continents, and they're exceedingly far apart. Um, but anyway, they've all, it's this mainstream media, you know, when you see all the little squares where they're all repeating the same message. Um, they were all panicked about insufficient troop numbers and uh, imminent war threat. Nobody explains what this war is for or about. Oh, we're just going to wade in cause the Ukraine. What, what defines winning? Flattening Moscow with a bomb? Lenin's mausoleum? I don't think so. Uh, capturing the entire government and arresting all the politicians and putting a, a puppet government in? What defines a win? At what cost in human blood? And debt, or is, is this even a viable concern on all the nations? No, 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 must war. Well, warmongery was part of that mercantilist class because that will be the distraction, like the, the, the March 2020 biological story, that actually saw the biggest crime be nearly a quarter of a hundred trillion going to banks, bigger bailout than ever before. Unbelievable. So at the same time, they're saying, on one hand, inflation go down. The message coordinators through the MSM across all Western nation states are hyping inflation, giving oil a little bit of a pop because they're going to be talking a war with Russia and how they all need to arm up. So they're going to spike the military industrial complex, which is an absolutely captured fraudulent arms dealer intermediary bung fest for insiders to cash out on uh, all in the name of the tax man getting you the best price for tomahawk missiles or whatever the hell it may be so those are known strongholds of the insider cartels that absolutely whip hundreds of percents of cream of what is being paid for that it gets loaded on a debt sandwich which will never be paid means ever greater proliferation of debt and yet the fed is going to tell you rates go down for rates to go down this is a seesaw that's the fulcrum this hand over here for rates to go down the debt has to go up in value rates on my mm. elbow hand so how the hell where you're riding up and you're, you're proclaiming you're targeting three trillion in budgets, which will only likely go higher because you'd need 760 billion for a single quarter. And it's such an achievement because you've undershot the ridiculous number you overperformed, you, you know, you threw out in the original instance. You actually created a bid, the, the, the debt markets to go up and the rates to turn down. Who's buying that? Who's buying that debt? That 760 billion is a new wad of debt. Hey, here's some more certificates. We owe you 760 billion and we'll pay you an interest rate on. Happy days. Who wants it? Do you want to buy it? Russia ain't buying it no more. They saw what happened to their 300 billion. China ain't going to buy it. Uh, no one on the BRICS nations are going to buy it. Um, the friendly Western nations, we have this mysterious buyer through Belgium. That's a Fed monetization proxy, if ever I've heard one. So you've got all of this going on. They're maintaining a bid and they got a fatter pipe than ever of new debt. And at the same time, they're talking up war and more expenditure to the military industrial complex to wade in behind Ukraine, where you had someone like Kat Turd saying literally they're down to spastics and pregnant women fighting for them, um, uh, which is quite amusing. Uh, but it is also desperately, desperately tragic. Uh, so, you know, I'm not going to roll on the floor laughing about a situation like this. And who's going to be killing each other? Well, it'll be Anglo-Saxon, Slavic, Irish descendant, Polish descendant, Westerners and Europeans, Gallic, uh, killing Russo-Slavs, apparently, assuming they're winning, which they won't be. 
Uh, and who's the guys who are standing back and watching this and saying, happy days, we're thinning out both our enemies here in overpopulation. And also Arabs, we're going to be thinning out the Houthis that are now backed by Iran. Listen, anybody who's a neighbor that doesn't approve of America doing what it is, how many times do we say of Israel backed by America? or America backed by Israel. I don't know which way around it is now when you look at the power of the ADL. So, I mean, this is this is where we're at. So how the hell are rates going to go that far down when all of politicians and MSM are hyping a war, pushing the oil price up? Well, oil is the Rockefeller tax for inflation, and inflation is central banker policy. So oil goes up, your flights go up, your deliveries go up, your petrol goes up, um, your you know holidays, ordering online, packaging, uh, the whole shooting match. It is the most in everything inflationary aspect that you can match. So we're getting oil going up. You, how long do you think that rates are going to go down? So, And at the same time, you're issuing ever more debt. Everybody gets the focus on the inflation side of the seesaw and forgets there's a bond market with a massive supply. The first thing you learn in Economics 101 is supply and demand. You're getting an ever greater supply of debt at the end of the debt system. That's the situation. Everybody's wearing pink crogs. It's no longer fashionable. And I'm bringing in oil tankers full of the the, the bloody suckers and saying, buy my pink crocs, buy my pink crocs. And they're super high value. They, they are worth $100 each. And I hold it at that price, even though I'm only sold to one crazy tourist that didn't understand. Mark to market value, $100. And I'm sitting with him and saying, no, the market for pink crocs is here. And I'm sitting with the stock. Who's going to be the buyer? What ends up happening? People say, hey, we don't store in this stuff anymore. Get rid of it. Dump it in the ocean. Do something. It ain't worth anything. No one's going to buy it. And what happens is it loses immense value. You can't give it away for 50 cents. And what that happens is you get a rate spike, exactly the opposite of what everybody has been talking. I am the literally, I don't know anybody else, but I don't watch that much. So I suppose I can't uh, say it unequivocally. The guy who's most talking about the dangers of a rate spike, right into rate cut talk. I am talking the exact opposite. Why? Because... The market's going to call BS on this. The Fed doesn't set the rates when things get disorderly. If you're bringing 760 billion debt in a single quarter and there's an 850 billion chunk behind it for quarter two, you're bringing the pink crogs at the wrong time on a, on a volume never seen before. And everyone's already got a pair of those. In fact, they're getting bored of them and throwing them away and they're uncool. Um, and that's where we are with debt. Everybody found out the 60-40 portfolio is failing and the debt wasn't doing what it was supposed to do when the equity sold off. So it's going out of fashion real, real fast. That's why I keep using the example of pink crogs. And that's kind of where we're at. Uh, and if it goes out of fashion, it dumps in value. There is no bid and eventually someone recognizes it. The Fed can set whatever rate it likes. If the market says, I'm not buying, I'm not buying, I'm not buying, they'll be the only buyer. Yeah. They'll self-monetize. Yeah. And that's basically where we're at. And they'll try to keep it up for as long as they can until everyone points out, but you're bankrupt. You, you don't even have the money. You can't afford or be able to buy all of this stuff. And then you have contagion. And then everybody suddenly lets it go and debt goes to near zero or zero. And that's the point where you're dumping the pink crogs into the ocean. Slowly the other ones. You can't even afford the bill to destroy them responsibly. That's how it goes. And that's what we saw in the glut in oil, that things can go negative, um, essentially, on the futures markets and to zero in the cash markets. There was no storage space. Debt to zero. Interest rates spike. The biggest debtor, biggest nation will have the fastest interest rates, and that'll actually lead to potentially a dollar spike for a while, crushing all the other owes dollar nations all denominate in debt. Their currencies all spike uh, to the downside. They capitulate and then the dollar falls and never to recover reasonably. And you don't want to be in that volatility. People haven't seen FX volatility. Uh, and remember, debt and money go hand in hand. Those digits are borrowed into existence. It's the asset and liability column. 
the one asset goes to zero, you get a spike in the rates, then relative to the other guy who hasn't spiked his rates yet, your currency appreciates for a while um, uh, because it's getting paid a crazy uh, yield. And that's that's the game. That's the game as I see it. And no one's talking about it. Do you know anyone else who's saying while they're talking about cuts and pivots, the Fed won't get to determine the rate. The Bank of England during the Soros crisis was a small, a tiny microcosm of how this works. They spent all their money trying to defend the pound. They were done. It was empty and it was all futile. They increased the rates twice in one day, but it wasn't them that chose to do it. To maintain the semblance that they were in control, they had to move the rates up with what the market was forcing them to do. Because they say, we won't buy, we won't buy, we won't buy, we won't buy here, we won't buy there. Okay, where will you buy? No, still no bid. Okay, where will you buy? Rates going higher, value going lower. Where do I go? If I'm, look, my guess on inflation is we're actually getting 15%. If you pay me 22%, I'm a buyer. Okay, yeah. good luck. But that means the price I'm buying at is a whole truckload lower. And now you're throwing income at me. Hand over first. If I'm taking this risk in this environment, I want 7% over what I think the real inflation rate is. That's it. Okay, I'm a buyer of bonds there. Okay, well, that's a 75% collapse. <laughs> yeah, but nice. then, yeah, but then uh, the debt, uh, the interest payments to the debt becomes unsustainable, which makes Correct. which makes investing in the bonds even more risky. Correct. Everyone. Like, gets I'm an investor, out. and then, like rates get all the way up to twenty percent. Sure, I might get a twenty percent twenty percent return on my investment, but at the same time, I've got to ask myself, uh, wh what's the likelihood that they actually service this uh, these interest payments to begin with? Oh, we break almost uh, simultaneously with the spike. It, it goes into tilt. It's just like a pinball machine. You've shaken it too much. It goes tilt. The ball, the lights go off, goes dead. And I literally mean the lights go out. Uh, not, I choose that for a reason. Uh, and the ball just drops and runs down. You know, if you're, I'm maybe giving my age away talking about pinball, but tilt, uh, power gone, light off, game over. Yeah. All the balls go, chip, dip, 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 dip. all the things go back to zero. Thank you. Put a new coin in. Start again. <laughs> that is reset. Tilt on the pinball machine is your reset. And paperwork and brokerage accounts and thinking you own this. Well, we had a pool which we were holding for people, but we lent the script out to them. They went bankrupt. They can't provide it. This, 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 but this, but that. Welcome. Join a queue. I'm already in the FTX queue waiting to get paid back. You join another queue in something else where you're supposedly going to get paid back. You'll get paid back some proxy new cbdc thing the pensioners that have lost all their pensions will get some ubi proxy token after six months of social unrest and absolute turmoil and then they get to but they want to put martial law you've got to understand they love war because it gives them super normal powers because there's this extreme event we're entitled you know to um to, to put the higher cause into play here and that means your needs are being subordinated for the war effort. You know, it's nothing like a big old global war, you know, uh, the scarcity and, you know, women couldn't get stockings and they couldn't do this because, you know, the cotton was being used for uniforms and all of this stuff, you know, that's the war. And then as you saw with the medical biological variety, the lockdown uh, was absolute power over your movement. It's actually unhealthy for you. We, we, some people are only spending 10% outdoors. They gave you literally an hour in a day. That literally is 10%. Uh, and it's exceedingly unhealthy not to get out. Even on cloudy days, you get natural vitamin D, even on cloudy days from the sun directly, that you can't replace artificially. Blue light, red light, all of this. So they put you in the weakest set of circumstances that most saw you likely to be depressed, low mindset, in a state of fear, great stress, financial stress, and then created an, a catchy uh, virus that and put you in the circumstances where your immune system would be in its most suppressed to try create contagion. And my goal is I'm loving life. I'm having more fun. I'm buying more motorcycles. I'm flying around even more. I'm swimming in the sea every day. I'm staying super fit and strong and healthy. I'm doing Bikram yoga. I'm doing cold water submersion. I'm loving my life. And that's how I intend to deal with anything. And I will not comply. Let someone tell me I can't go in the ocean. 
I will get up at four in the morning. They're going to have to put a cop on every rock. So the, uh, the great non-compliance error has to come. Keep doing those things that keep you healthy. You've got to be healthy mental, mentally, and you need to look after the body to do that. You can't command center from the brain when you're out of shape and healthy. You feel less likely. You feel more down. Biology dictates uh, mental disposition. You start with the body. It's the easiest place to get wins. You can measure it to get that strong mind. You've got to be uh, fit, healthy, and strong. And I, I know we're going into the next of their pressure, fear, immune suppress, potential lockdown, climate, global hack, war, name your crisis of tag. It's immaterial what the tag will be. There will be a form. I intend not to comply. I intend to have optionality through multiple residencies in, in different places where I'll be able to assess the affordability. I know massive rural places where there's just not, not enough police forces where I'll run around like a little mutt uh, on heat and I'm going to do exactly that. Uh, and I'm going to buy myself those privileges by making money and I'm going to trade this into wealth and I'm going to protect wealth by having physical assets, relationships, locality, uh, and this literally is everything the preppers themselves have prepped for, uh, and you're going to be tested. Uh, it may be full zombie apocalypse, it may not. I'd rather over-prepare and have been pessimistic and have too many tools, too many options, <laughs> and way more stuff than I need, than be caught in the other side of that equation. And you've got to protect yourself, unfortunately, from the great unwashed who won't have seen this coming, won't have prepared, and now want your stuff. Yeah, so I get the sense that the cat's out of the bag because a lot of people think the same way that you're talking about now. So how will the World Economic Forum, the global elite, how will they be able to actually finesse all of these things to the public if a significant chunk of the public already knows their game plan? Well, you would have thought that on uh, the March 2020 events. It was utterly devastating to me to see the amount of citizen um, uh, police that suddenly started calling people out for masks and putting pressure on people that didn't get the jab and all of these things. Plus, they'll weaponize their Hollywood whores like Arnold Schwarzenegger and a bunch of other clowns uh, that will all come out and say, stuff your freedoms or words to that effect. Um, they have immense power. And they will also, don't forget, you had cops whipping grannies on park benches who are taking a walk and sitting down outside and saying, well, you're not going anywhere. You're sitting down. You need to go inside. It's a lockdown and all of this. Dragging them off in the back of vans. Go look at some of the what went on in Australia. My goodness, cops grabbing women and wrestling them to the grounds with knees in their backs. You're talking about weaponized police force that don't ask questions and do exactly as told. And you need to work with your local cops. You need to prepare them for what's coming and say, you have families in this game. We don't lose our head. We don't suddenly become suppressors of our fellow humans because some politician got a cockamony head and goes dining out with some other crowd of the Bohemian Grove and all these other uh, collaboration, collaborators, um, you want to put these collaborators to bed. You want to put the pressure on them early uh, and you've got to have a big non-compliance and you've got to organize locally. You've got to arm up. You've got to know your cop. You've got to know your farmer and cut the supermarket chains out of your life. Go direct to farmer as much as you can. It's time to unwind their grid and Never mind this TV. It's designed to bring you fear. Never mind all these social medias. It's designed to terrorize you. I am not here. Let me just say, despite saying some pretty strong things about the possible trajectory of many things, there's going to be huge opportunities for you to be an awesome leader and take many people and help them over this obstacle course. You're going to make your name during this era if you are framed right, physically right, mentally right, and can see it. You will be one of my heroes helping other people man, uh, in, uh, you know, navigate this. This is your opportunity of a lifetime. It will be what was written on your gravestone when you pass. This is your moment to stand proud. Choose the correct size. Choose the correct side by principle, not who you think will win.
Be a principled person. If you're ready to be that, start preparing. It's great for your mind. You feel better every day. You've got a firearm. You've got ammunition. You've got fresh water flowing. You've got a fallback plan. You've got a Toyota camper van that can take you to the desert nearby where you can sit and live. It's got solar panel this. Make those investments. Make money. Get organized. Form groups. Mild, uh, small associations. This is what we're preparing for. Uh, and treat it as a mini military op and just treat it like you want to kill it. There's, everyone's going to have to run a marathon. And there's some people in running shoes that are trained and are fit. And there's other people swigging beers with bellies out here on the, the, the start line. And they don't even know they're going to be, the chair's going to be pulled and they're told to, they're going to be told to run. And then they're going to be puking along the road and crying and underprepared and wailing. Uh, and you've got to decide which one you're going to be. And are you going to lead one of the pelotons? Uh, of this cycle race, this running race, through by virtue of being prepared and organized. And I vote for the latter. Uh, and this is your great opportunity. Uh, and it's going to be locally driven, and you can do a lot locally. Forget voting. This thing that the top, the fish rots from the head, and the head is rotten. It's rotten in America. It's rotten in Australia. It's rotten in New Zealand. It's rotten across Europe. It's rotten in the UK. It's rotten everywhere. You can't fix this thing. You know, the tail and the meat can't fix the rotten head. They get rotten too. What you have to do is you have to accept that there's nothing good there for you. I, I actually talk because of the Deagle stats, leaving the Western nations. I go that far. And, and I know people say, but I got kids, I got schools. Hey, there's great kids, schools, other way. You got How much do you care? You don't care enough? Okay, you're choosing then to stay. You know, you're choosing then to stay. I think you need to be in other countries. I really do. There's English speaking ones that are on the other side of the BRICS equation. I'm sitting in one. I'm living the life of Riley. I swim in the sea right here. Hot sea, cold sea, bay existence, mountains, hikes, bicycles, cycling, off-road, on-road, motorbike. It's all yeah. You can have the life of Riley, wine, vineyards. You can't be separated from farms here. They're right here. You can invest in one. This is what you need to do. And don't be in that Western access because the Deagle stats scare me. How the hell did you come in projecting that? Every year you go plus one or two percent and then you go a hundred million plus less Americans. I think it was actually two. Uh... They they brought that they brought it down to ninety five million. Yeah, ninety five million out of three hundred. So you're losing two hundred million. Sorry, that, I thought that was what was left. Uh, yeah. Okay, so you're actually losing two hundred million. You're going to be in thirty three. You're going to have ninety five million Americans. They had something ridiculous, like about fifteen. They, they took down the projections, by the way. And for those who don't know, Deagle is a I, I don't know exactly what it is. It's a military intelligence. You get all these contractors to military uh, companies. Uh, that are insiders. So the whole thing is a dark state, CIA, FBI. When you're in that business, it, it's all backhanders. You make much more money than your official salary. And there's these nasty little consultancies. There's a group called Strat4 as well, strategic forecast or whatever. They also deal and have ex-generals and ex-people that are politically compliant. Uh, these nasty little uh, consultancies get paid huge fees to give out information. And they are basically a conduit for insider CIA, FBI, three-letter agency type data that says, hey, stuff's coming down your way. You should adjust your models like this. Instead of marketing to America, their GDP is going to drop by 67%. Their population is going to drop by two thirds uh, and forget UK because they're going down by 80 percent. They're literally going to become like a 15 million or, or 60, uh, 75 percent, uh, a 15 sub 15 million country. You know, we've got to market more to these nations So you actually have corporations that are planning through a massive depopulation event. I mean, hold on. Who gave you those numbers? How do you know that? People don't guess that by accident. They, 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 they explained. Stuff. Yeah, so Deagle, I think they sent out like a statement or they explained it away by saying that there'd be a great exodus from these Western countries. No, but the global reason. population went down. Yeah, the global population. No, they didn't. Uh, they didn't have. They didn't successfully explain it. Well, their explanation raised more questions. Mm -hmm. uh, I, know, I know what you mean. I'm just pointing out yeah. it raised way more questions because... There was no, in Russia, suddenly 200 million Americans that showed up on boats. There was no, you know, nation that went up. There was no nation in the West that went up. 
So we're talking about the whole of the West all immigrating what? To China? Not likely. There was no major increase in the others. Most of them were flat or plus three, mm -hmm. minus three. So, you, you know, there wasn't all of this. These people disappeared. They disappeared. So that's either the events of March 2020 working through still with greater mortality still to come. But that doesn't look like it's going to make anywhere close to those numbers as dark as it is. Um, so it can only go down as a uh, preemptive strike on the Western nation does horrific damage um, or major war of some form. And, you know, I don't, I don't, these aren't flukes. These aren't flukes that those forecasts come out. It's much better to be far away, Southern Hemisphere. I would say New Zealand and Southern Africa and even Argentina, if you speak Spanish, are better places to be. Um, if you want to increase your likelihood of survival. And everyone thinks, they'll listen to this and go, yeah, yeah, I should think about that. They'll spend a couple of days at home and hypernormality will carry on and you'll carry on doing exactly what you're doing. And then one day, one morning, you know, who knows? I hope not. I really hope not because I don't want this to happen. I'm just saying that's what they said. And I think there's more to it than what they're telling you. Uh, a blinding light and you go, damn, I'm about to get incinerated. I should have done that move thing. I was responsible for all the kids. We all burn societies right now. I don't know. Hope that doesn't happen, but get out of there. If if it were down to me, get out of there. Uh, get out of there. Have optionality outside of the Western nation. Start doing it now. We help and specialize with that in our community, the market sniper, as well as the trades, as well as the investments, as well as the partners and people in other nations. Uh, you know, I mentioned barley in a YouTube for Australians because it's popular, it's nearby. And we got two or three people who got in touch with us straight away and said, I'm, I'm like wired with all the contacts here for getting people in. Um, and we're introducing, we're putting people together. We will. Uh, and we're already doing that in Panama, you know, in uh, here and in other places to get people on the other side of this curtain. Remember that the communism had their Bolshevism. They lost 20 to 60 million people. And they didn't have all of the West population. That was such a massive percentage of their population. If you think this doesn't happen, look at what happened during the Bolshevik era. The absolute slaughter, cruelty, and barbaricness was uh, nothing has equaled it. Then you look at the Armenian genocide of Orthodox Christians in Armenia and in Russia being absolutely, and it's the same perps, it's the same perps, it's always the same perps. Then you look what's going on in Gaza. They're, 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 soul, they're soulless people that are doing soulless things. You think it's not going to happen that uh, it, that could ever be visited on you. You live in this hyper-normality of suburbia with cars and pay, house payments and all of this. I'm afraid sometimes your world gets rocked um, and you've got to prepare for that. Understood. Well, on that note, Francis, uh, go ahead and tell us where we can find you. Great opportunities will come out of this, guys. The message is a, is a stark one, but there's chance to be heroes, chance to take action, chance to get prepared, chance to build huge wealth, uh, uh, ironically, because it is a polarizing event. Position well on this and you're flying. We talk about that. We position for that, both at an investment level, a trading level, residencies and everything else on the market sniper you can book a call to join us um, we like to chat to everybody first so there's no unrealistic situation we have app our own bespoke app we don't use slack or whatsapp or anything it's teaching educating on how to on big time frames trade stroke invest and build wealth in a lot of these markets that we are speaking of from crypto right the way across commodities the, uh, and commodity equities and everything else when we roll into them and how we determine from the charts that that happens. And, you know, at the end of the day, uh, we are very fixated on the truth of the matter uh, and what is the real reality behind what's coming and being as, as fully prepared for it. And if that means we've gone too far or we've overstated and we get something milder, I'm absolutely delighted for everyone for all of us, but we'll be exceptionally well prepared then. Um, but at the end of the day, you can only do too much and you have to forgive yourself. But I want your survival. I want your thrival. And that's what we focus on in our community by trading, prepping, 
uh, financially and outside of that from residencies and uh, marketsniper.com. But watch the YouTubes first. Decide if you like what we do on both the Market Sniper and the Crypto Sniper. And thank you very much for having me on. I truly enjoyed it. Yeah, likewise. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like. Comment down below. A powerful interview by Francis. Super excited to see what you guys have to say to a number of different things that Francis brought up, as well as subscribe to the channel so we can get more guests like Francis. We're closing in on, I think, 4,000 now. So if we can get that 4,000 number, it would be fantastic. So guys, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Comment down below, like the video, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye, y'all.